Hey guys, I wanted to do a video that shows you when you're given a set of vectors, how we can prove that this is a basis for um, a certain vector space. In this case, uh, these three vectors are a basis for R3. So remember what a basis is. A basis is a set of linearly independent vectors that span a vector space. So that means, and I've got another video on this that goes in a lot more detail, but it means that when I take the linear combination of these three vectors, I'll be able to span every single point in R3. So I can, the linear combination of those three vectors in T, I can essentially create any vector in R3. And then I just need to show that they are linearly independent. So to, to do this, I'm, I'm trying to show that the span of T equals R3. So if I can show that R3 is a subset of the span of T, and I can show that the span of T is a subset of R3, then I can say that the span of T is equal to R3. Right? So let's start with uh, let's start with the easier one. First, let's start with span of t is a subset of R3. So why is the span of t a subset of R3? We know that the span of t is a subset of R3 because these the vectors that are in t, which are 2, 0, 1, uh, 1, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, since these vectors are in R3, right? They've got three components. So if I were to scale these vectors by anything and then add those vectors together, I would still get a vector that consists of three components. So the vector would still be in R3. So basically, since these three vectors are in R3 and R3 is closed under linear combinations, then the span of t, because the span of t is just the linear combinations of, the, of those three vectors, it's a subset of R3. That's what I'm saying. The linear combinations of those three vectors has also got to be something that has three components, right? That exists in R3. So I've done the first one. Now I'd like to show that R3 is a span of t, or a subset of the span of t. And in order to do that, we're going to define uh, some x. Let's let let x be any vector in R three. So if I can show that any vector in R three can be expressed as the linear combination of those three vectors, then I can say that R three is a subset of the span of T. So let's say x is equal to x1, x2, x3. And remember, what I'm trying to get here, let's express this as a linear combination of those three vectors. 2, 0, 1 plus 1, 1, 0 plus 0, 0, 1. Oh, and sorry, I forgot all my constants. It's the most important part. It's a linear combination. C2 and C3. Let's just be super super clear here. Let me scroll over a little bit. Where C1, C2, and C3 are all constants. Great. So what we can do here, we can set up a matrix. Right? Let's set up an augmented matrix and solve where I'll take the coefficient t10, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And then I've got x1, x2, x3. Those are, because those are just numbers, right? Those are just numbers, right? I'm doing the general case. So just a reminder, so c1, c2, c3, and this is my x vector. 
So now I've just got to row reduce this. So I know that the two has got to be, a, since that's a pivot, it's a leading entry. So this needs to be uh, a one. So I'll take row one and I'll divide it by two. This will give me one half zero x1 over 2 and then my other rows will remain the same okay let me zoom out a little bit so next I'd like to get rid of this because this is I need I've got a, a constant above my pivot right now this this being the pivot so I need to reduce that half to a zero so it makes the most sense here since my row 2 is also got zeros if I subtract row 2 from row 1 it's not going to change the pivot and I've got in row 1 so row 1 is going to be row 1 minus half of row 2 so what will this give me well this will give me 1 0 uh, 0 and then I've got x1 minus x2 all over 2 right they've got a common denominator x1 over 2 minus x2 over 2 and then my other rows will remain the same 0 1 0 1 0 1 well, great and we're very close so we just need to get rid of this this one right there beneath, underneath that first pivot that we have. We need to change that to a, a, to a zero. So we can, if we take row three and we subtract row one from it, then you'll see that it's not, since these, since these values here are zero, it's not gonna change my pivots in row three. So, oops. This will be one zero zero, right? I'm not changing anything in the first two rows. Zero one zero x two, and this will be zero zero one minus zero, and then I've got x three minus x one minus x two over two. And this is my reduced row echelon form, right? So how do we interpret the results of this matrix? So what we've really got here, remember what these rows represented, C1, C2, and C3, the, the, those were the coefficients. And then this was my, these were my X. My, so what I've, what I've really got here is C1 plus 0c2 plus 0c3 is equal to x1 minus x2 over 2. And then you can apply the same logic for the other ones, but I'm, I'm sure that you understand, right? It's just the coefficients in front of our constants. So this one shows us that c1 is equal to x1 minus x2 over 2. We can clearly see that c2 is equal to x2 and c3 is equal to x3 minus x1 minus x2 over 2, right? So what, what have we done here? We've expressed our constants as any vector x, right? I could plug in any values of x that I wanted and I would be able to find some constants that would be a linear combination of those three vectors, right? So what that tells me is that I can choose x to be anything. I'm going to be able to find constants that make this uh, that ma that will make up that vector used as a linear combination of these three values, right? And since I can do that, that means that all of R three, any vector in R three is a subset of the span of t because I can create it as a linear combination of those three vectors. So 
That's great. So we've just proven now that R3 is equal to the span of T. So this means that I can reach any vector. It means that these three vectors, remember what the question was saying, we're showing that it's a basis. And to show it's a basis, we need to show that this, that all three vectors, the linear combination will span the entire vector space. And I need to show that the three vectors are linearly independent. So right now we've shown that we can span the entire vector space, R3. But we have not shown that they're linearly independent. And remember, when we're showing that something is linearly independent, if we set all of our x's here, if, the, if, this, if this was the zero vector, and the only solution for the linear combination of these three vectors to equal the zero vector is when all the constants are equal to zero, then that means that they're linearly independent. So rather than setting up an entire new system of equations with this being the zero vector, well, I've already solved that system of equations. I've solved exactly what I'm trying to solve, right? Which is right here. So what I just need to do is plug in x1, x2, x3 as when those are equal to zero, right? So when x1, x2, and x3 are all equal to zero, the only solution for the linear combination of those three vectors to get the zero vector is when all the constants are equal to zero. And you can see that just by clearly by plugging in zeros, like zero minus zero divided by two, zero. I've got zero, C2 equals zero, and then zero minus zero minus zero divided by two. It's all gonna be zero. And that's, and that's the only solution, right? So therefore, the vectors are linearly independent. Whoa. So then we can conclude, right? We've showed we've showed both things that we need to show. They're linearly independent and we span the entire vector space. So therefore T is a basis for R3.